There are a lot of videos on YouTube about bug out bags and go home bags. This one's going to be a little different. Maybe what you're used to seeing is a bunch of guys who are in good shape with big heavy packs. I'm not in the best of shape. I'm about 300 pounds. I'm about a hundred and some pounds overweight. Maybe you're a little overweight too. Maybe you've got some health issues. And while I appreciate these other YouTube channels and the work these guys do, I think they're all great. Uh, what about for guys like me or ladies? Uh, what about the people who aren't in the best of shape, who maybe could stand to lose quite a few pounds? What about us? We want to survive too, right? We're not just going to roll over and die. So today we're going to talk about a few things that we can do as out of shape people to try to make up some of that difference. You know, no, I'm not a Navy SEAL. No, I'm not in the best of condition. But there are some things we can do that can help compensate for our shortcomings physically. Um, some equipment, some strategy, uh, some thoughts and ideas to help make up for our poor physical condition. Now, of course, the first thing that we could do or that I could do is to get in shape. Obviously, the number one thing that I could do to help my chances of survival in a doomsday situation would be to, to drop a bunch of weight, get into shape. Uh, I'm working on that. Okay, but in the meantime, what do we do? Uh, the next thing that I've thought about quite a bit is just getting out here and doing it. Get out here, get your body used to carrying a pack. Get your body used to walking long distances. Uh, when, you, when you're out here doing this sort of thing, your body will tell you kind of where your weak spots are. Uh, last time I was out here, I made a nice video. I'll link to that in the description below. Check it out if you want. Um, my shoes weren't in the best of condition. I, had, I was wearing some shoes that I almost wore all the way through. Um, my socks weren't really right. We'll talk about socks here in a minute. We're going to talk about a bunch of things. So stick around. This should be a fun video to make. I hope for you it's a fun video to watch. And welcome to the Alliance. I've never understood why they make that shot. It looks great. But you gotta set your camera up and then walk down there, then act like you're just walking back. <laughs> anyway, we're out here today on the Hennepin Canal trail. It's pretty much a bike path. I like to come out here to do my rucking just because there's not a lot of traffic. You don't run into a lot of people's dogs running after you, things like that. I hope wherever you live you've got a nice place like this where it's safe and fun to walk. Not to mention it's beautiful. It's here uh, late November in northwestern Illinois. What are we at? About 48 degrees outside. It's a little windy, a little chilly, but I've got a bunch of layers of extra clothes I can put on. And I've got enough room in my rucksack that if I need to shed some layers of clothing, i got room to put them in there, put them back on later if I need to. Now in my last video, I walked about 12 and a quarter miles. Had some issues with my feet, blisters, kind of hot spots. It wasn't good. That's probably because I wasn't wearing the proper footwear. You know, my weight has something to do with it, I'm sure. But I can make up for that with the better footwear. Better shoes, better socks. Today I'm wearing an alpaca wool sock made by a company called Hollow. I'd like to take a minute, tell you a little bit more about those socks right now. Hollow socks are made in the USA, North Carolina to be exact. They're made out of alpaca wool. The bad news and the good news about these socks, the bad news, they're not cheap. The good news, they're not cheap. In the description below, you'll find my affiliate link to Hollow Socks. If you click on it, it'll take you directly to their website. You can check out what they've got to offer. If you end up buying something, I get a commission. So thank you if you do. Anyway, give them a peek. Click on the link. See what you think. Then have a drink.
you know how my feet are doing when we're all done here today. Like I said, we're going to go about 12 and a quarter miles, hopefully. Hopefully I don't have to call it quits before then. Yep, the farmers are out farming. I love the smell of anhydrous in the morning. It smells like victory. Weather's starting to pick up, the wind's really picking up. We might have some weather moving our way, that's why it's important to have a bag. <clears throat> Wind damn near blew you over there. Another thing we've really got to consider with these go home bags, bug out bags, inch bags, is the weight of the bag. Now, I've seen some people on YouTube with some pretty heavy looking bags. You know, think uh, if you've ever seen Canadian Prepper, his bag's got to weigh 90 pounds, but he's in great shape. I'm sure it'd be no problem for him to carry that bag uh, a great distance. Me, in the shape I'm in, I'm not carrying that bag very far. So, the bag I am carrying, we're weighing in uh, about 17 pounds. That's including, well, I've drank some of the water. But uh, every liter of water weighs 2.2 pounds. It's a kilogram. Um, to help lighten that load a little bit, you could use a life straw if you've got access to water along your route. I happen to have a life straw in here just in case. I know where my water sources are along my potential routes that I might have to take, and I'm prepared to exploit them because I've got the right gear. Having the right gear helps you make up for some of these uh, shortcomings you might have in your life. You know, if you're 25 years old and you're built like Tarzan, doing a 20, 30 mile walk would be nothing for you. Uh, for some of the rest of us, with aches and pains, with health issues, with carrying too much weight already, we got to keep our packs light. Just the necessities. Now, with that said, making sure nobody's looking, it just so happens that I've stashed a few things along my route. That's right, I'm talking about caches. You know what I mean? Caches are just a container that you can put things in and hide them or bury them. What kind of things might I have in a cache? Maybe a tarp, some rope, something to build a quick shelter out of. Something I don't necessarily want to carry the whole way. But if I had to stay out overnight, a cache would give me the things I need to help accommodate that. Extra snivel gear, uh, things that might be too heavy you don't want to carry. I'm going to show you how I build my caches. There's a lot of ways to skin a cat. There's a lot of different ways you can build a cache. This is just how I do mine. Check it out. And yes, I did bring a scale in my pack. We're about three miles into our walk. But you know, anybody can just put an empty backpack on and come out here walking. But no, I got I got gear in mind and we're out here doing it. You need to get out here and do it too. Like I said, it's important to come out and actually do this from time to time. Your body's going to speak to you and let you know your shortcomings. Uh, it's going to let you know if your knees are a problem, if your feet are a problem. It's going to let you know if your pack's too heavy for you. Okay, so get out here, walk. Walk with your pack on your back. Maybe if you can only do a mile. All right, well, do a mile. Maybe work your way up to two miles, then three, then four, and so on. Um, maybe you've got some issues where that's not even a possibility. You know, there's there's probably people watching this video who, who can't walk. Well, then you need to start building your team up. You know, start... Start finding somebody who could push you, somebody who could drag you. I, 
you know, have a tactical wheelchair or something cool. I, but you're going to have to build a team. You're going to have to start building your network because when you build a network, everybody has to contribute. And I'm sure that even if you have a disability or something that prevents you from doing this stuff, you still have something that would contribute greatly to the team. You still have something that that network's going to need, uh, knowledge, an ability, a skill set, or even just a positive mindset. There's something that you could bring to the team, and the team will bring you along with it. So start building those, uh, start building your tribe up and keep a positive mindset. That is the most important thing in any survival situation is the will to live. Like I said in the beginning of this video, just because I'm fat and out of shape doesn't mean I want to die. I sound like a hypocrite because I really should lose weight. I really should uh, work on my high blood pressure because I don't want to die that way either. Whether it's zombies or a heart attack, I, I like to stick around a little longer. So. That's part of the fun here too. I'm out here walking. I'm out here rucking. That's exercise. And if it's uh, disguised as you know survivalist training, so what? You're burning calories. You're, you're working on your leg muscles. You're strengthening your back. If that's what it takes to motivate someone to get out here and do it, good, good. Because uh, as much as we all like to sit around at home and watch YouTube or twiddle around on our phones, we also need to be doing this stuff. I've spent too much time sitting on the couch watching videos like this um, and not actually out here doing this. So thanks for coming along with me today. It's good fun. It's good exercise. We're out here in a beautiful place. Another thing about my bag is, oh, it's tactical. Look at that. It's Olive Drab. Well, the channel's called Olive Drab Alliance. And don't think I haven't already ordered an Olive Drab hoodie. I know. It's Olive Drab Alliance. How come he's wearing gray and black all the time? We're working on that. Listen. We're nine meals away from total anarchy. That gives you three days. The first day, people aren't going to be out here marauding. Maybe where you live they will be, but where I live, the first 24 hours, most people are just going to be trying to find out what the heck's going on. There'll be a lot of people trying to get home because a lot of people out here commute to work. Uh, day two pretty much will be the same. Day three, things might start to get a little sketchy. You might want to think about going gray, not going tactical or tactful. Um, also, where I live, this is pretty much the norm. This is what normies are using. Uh, camouflage clothes. Uh, we got a lot of hunters, a lot of outdoors people in this area. Uh, an olive drab tactical backpack isn't really going to stand out where I live. Now if you live in a suburb or an urban environment, it might make you stick out like a sore thumb. It might even make you a potential target. People are going to say, wow, I wonder what kind of stuff he's got in there. Maybe it's stuff I need, let's go take it. But around here, this is what normal people wear. I mean, I've seen kids walking to school with backpacks like this. It's not out of the ordinary in this area to have stuff that looks like that. Well, it's starting to sprinkle a little bit. And it's getting to be about lunchtime. So we're going to look for a dry place to stop and take a long break. It'll be a good chance to bust out some chow, change our socks, get our poncho out. It's just sprinkling now, but I anticipate it's going to be pretty wet weather here in a little bit. Distance 6.0 miles. Duration 2 hours 31 minutes 39 seconds. Pace 23 minutes 10 seconds per mile. Alright, there's the beautiful Green River. This is where we stopped in my last video and took a little break. So, some of you have been here before with me, some of you haven't. Thanks for coming along today. Uh, if you get any kind of benefit out of this or any enjoyment, hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. I really do appreciate it. I try to be active in the comments. But if I don't reply to your comment, don't feel bad. It's nothing personal, just sometimes there's a lot of them. Alright, this is an aqueduct. 
an aqueduct, a bridge, an overpass isn't the kind of place you might want to camp out. I mean, if it's bad weather, last resort kind of thing, I get it. <laughs> but that's where everyone else is going to be looking to go too. So we're going to make our way down under here, break out some chow, break out the rain poncho, the weather's moving in. You know, down here wouldn't be a bad spot or somewhere in this area to hide a cache. A little stash of goodies that would make my journey a little easier along my way home. A uh, cache is just uh, something you could hide or bury and put some stuff in it that you might need that you don't necessarily want to carry all the way. Uh, maybe it's a resupply for stuff you use along the way. All right, we've got the jet stove going. And we've got our choice of entrees. We've got the Ready Wise Chili Mac. And we've got the Mountain House Chili Mac. What's the difference? A couple dollars per pack. Ready Wise is kind of the generic Walmart brand. Mountain House is the name brand. Which one should I try today? I think we'll go with the Ready Wise. I think we'll go with the one that's a little less expensive. Alright, so as soon as this boils up, we got two cups of water in there. We'll tear open this pouch, we'll dump in the hot water, stir it up, seal it back up, let it set for 12 to 15 minutes while we rest and enjoy. These, uh, these are freeze-dried meals. Pretty good way to lighten your pack a little bit. They don't weigh very much. Last time I came out I had about, I don't know, a pound of food with me. I think both these together maybe weigh half a pound. I don't know. They're not very heavy at all. So another good way, another strategy you can employ to lighten your pack is to go with freeze-dried meals. They're readily available online or wherever you like to shop at. So if you're a little overweight or out of shape like I am, you gotta keep in mind a few things. I'm gonna call them the five S's. Kind of like the 10 C's, but for fat people. Number one, shoes. Make sure you have good shoes. Number two, Socks. Make sure you have good socks. Now some of these, you know, these socks for hiking can be pretty expensive. The ones that you're going to see if you click on the link in the description below are pretty expensive. But think about some of your gear in here. What's your what's your knife cost you? You know, what's your mess kit cost you? What's your uh, jet stove cost you? Are they more important than your feet? Prioritize. All right, so. Number one, shoes. Number two, socks. Number three, stay light. Keep everything light. Number four, stash. Stash your cash. And number five, stop and take a rest. Shoes, socks, stay light. Stash your cache. Stop and take a break. The five S's. I'm not sure if I just invented those or not, but I'm going to take credit for them. All right. We're about to get down on some Chili Mac. You know how we do. I'm not going hungry. Are you kidding? And then uh, I think we're going to hit the trail. We got 6.1 miles to get back to the truck. Again, if you like what you see here, hit the like button. If you want to make a comment, leave a comment. If you want to join the Olive Drab Alliance, subscribe. We got all kinds of crazy videos on different things, but mostly it's to do with out, outdoor gear, outdoor stuff, a little bit of survivalism. Uh, what can I say? Welcome aboard. I'd be glad to have you with us on this journey. And as always, uh, I'm definitely going to pick up all my litter. I'm not going to leave any litter. I might even pick up some litter other people left and haul it out of here. Um, if you enjoy the outdoors, don't destroy the outdoors. It's just that easy. 
These wonderful places are for all of us to come out and enjoy, get a little fresh air, a little exercise. And uh, yeah, don't be trashy, keep it classy. Distance 12.0 miles, duration 5 hours 22 minutes 16 seconds, pace 20 minutes 52 seconds per mile. Ah, 12.2 miles. I've never been so happy to see old blue. We did it. Uh, how'd my feet hold up? Uh, a lot better than last time. I'm not going to sit here and tell you there's no issues going on with my feet right now, because they are hurting. They're sore. But it's more of a muscular skeletal type pain than a hot spot or blister type pain. I'm just not feeling the hot spots or blisters like I did last time when I walked this very same route, the very same distance. So they are doing better in those regards. They are sore, um, but it feels more like I've been on my feet all day than anything else. So the question was, am I too fat to bug out? The answer, yes and no. Yeah, uh, I did 12.2 miles today. I don't think I could have gone much further than that today. Now if I camped out or something, how far could I get the second day? I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to be pretty sore tomorrow. I can already I can already feel it. And just based on uh, my last walk, how sore I was the day after that, I don't think I'm walking 12 miles tomorrow. So, I got a lot more work to do. Maybe you do too. So, get on out there and do it. Oh, the Chili Mac. How was it? Uh, I'm going to try that Mountain House. Uh, I'm going to have to compare them side by side. I'm wondering if my mess kit didn't have something in it that tainted the flavor. Uh, I do store my sterno gas in there and I, I kind of wiped it clean, but there was definitely a funky flavor to it. So I'm going to try it again and I want to compare it side by side with the Mountain House. So subscribe, hit the subscribe button. That'll be a future video coming up. Also, uh, if you like this video, hit the like button. It's not going to hurt you any. Just hit the like button. Give it a thumbs up. Anyway, I hope you're having a great day wherever you are. I hope to be back out here soon doing this again. And right now I'm hoping to go have a, a beer, but I'm going to make it a light beer. I got to I gotta shape up. This is just unacceptable. <laughs> All right. Thank you.